What's up guys, and welcome to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast, the first ever episode of this podcast, dude. It has been long enough, me and my co-host, we have been waiting to do this forever, it has been a long time in the making, and here we are, we are making our first ever episode, me being the host, Andrew from Coast of Thrills, joined by my co-host, Caleb from Backyard Thrills. Caleb, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Andrew. It's great to finally start this podcast with you. I know. It is going to be so good. We have so much in store. We are focused on bringing you the highest quality content you can look for through a podcast, and we are going to be trying so many stuff. It is going to be a blast. I really hope you're going to be able to stick around, and we are going to have so much fun. Hopefully, you're going to be listening, and it's just going to be so good. I mean... It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. We have so much in store. It's um, gonna be a journey, that's for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be a journey into imagination. There you go. That's the first reference. Yo. Um. So. You're welcome, Disney fans. Yes, you're welcome, Disney fans. So, uh, so we are starting this podcast. Um, this is weird because it's, it's new for both of us. Uh, actually, Caleb, you've actually done some I, podcasts before. I do have previous podcast experience. I did do a podcast. With my stepdad before, we mostly talked about Disney parks and Disney stuff as a whole. Uh, however, we we did, uh, through that experience that I have, I was able to bring that sort of experience into this podcast that we have here through the stuff that I've learned with him through that podcast. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, like, that's, that's for Caleb, I mean, but I'm, like, brand new to this thing, like, He's making his podcast debut. Yeah, my podcast debut. I mean, I've listened to podcasts before, so... I mean, I, I, I'm like, if you're here just listening in the car while driving, just doing whatever, just doing stuff around the house, just thanks for watching. Um, I mean, it's just my first time doing a podcast, so it's pretty new for me, but... You know, is uh, with like being in the Coasters Unscripted podcast, we are gonna go unscripted, and you can just just see that. I mean, you can already tell this is pretty unscripted yeah. as it <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, we it, it's 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 gonna be a great time. But first, let's start out with let's get to know each other. I mean, let's start we'll start out with me. Um, my name's Andrew. Uh, I'm from Florida. Uh, and I'm a Ford enthusiast, so we both are. Yeah, we both are. So as you can tell, I'm, we're both pretty spoiled. So, but yeah, we're, who we are. Um, what I am. I mean, I'm a coast enthusiast from Ford, obviously. Uh, coast with the rolls on Instagram, YouTube, and I'm st- I started a TikTok. I mean, I don't know why, but I started TikTok. I also have Twitter, so go look at check that out. But I mean, and we also started this podcast. So I mean, adding another thing to whatever, but. Uh, yeah, so I'm starting this. I'm Coaster Thrills. Check me out on all of those platforms. Uh, but let's start out. How did I get into coasters? So, uh, probably I think the first coaster I ever did. Um, that was Shamu Express at SeaWorld Orlando, and it's now it's called Super Grover's Brock Boxcar Derby, whatever. But yeah, that was my first ever coaster. I rode it so long ago. I mean, I, I absolutely love the thing. I adore it. But the coaster that really kind of got me into coasters was Cheetah Hunt at uh, Busch Gardens Tampa. I mean, I remember going on that thing for the first time. I was told that it was like, it wasn't going to have an inversion. I was like, I was going through it. I was like, oh, this is going to be fine. It won't have an inversion. But then it just like popped up on me. And I was like, the zero G roll or whatever it is. The Harlan or whatever. I, I, I don't, I'm not the good on inversions. But that thing, I mean, I was, and then after that, I was just okay with it. I mean, like, honestly, like, like I had, I had no idea it would be an inversion going into it, but I mean it was good. Uh, I love Gene Hunt. It really got me into coasters. I still adore that coaster to this day. Uh, Might have rode it yesterday. We'll get into that later in the podcast. But <laughs> but yeah, Gene Hunt. I absolutely love that thing. Um, really just got me into coasters. But now next we'll go to our favorite coaster. My favorite coaster. I know it probably sounds a little you know basic. You know. But I, I don't fi- find anything better. I mean, something may come a little close, but still, Iron Gwazi is my number two. <laughs> so, guess what the number one is? Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance is my number one. So, I'm a little basic, but I love Steel Vengeance. 
Steel Vengeance, I feel like he just has the whole package for me. I mean, I know you're probably like yelling at me right now, but like Steel Vengeance, I, I adore. might be yelling at him in my head right now. Yeah, yeah, sadly. I mean, some people, some enthusiasts hate on this thing, which ugh. like I just, I just want people to love it. I love Steel Vengeance. I mean, it has like complete package, airtime. My favorite part of a coaster is airtime. Like nothing could top airtime, and Steel Vengeance obviously has everything you could ask for in airtime. So. And, so does Iron Gwazi. Uh, okay. Uh, kind of. Iron Gwazi is so good, but we'll get to that later. So, uh, but now for a credit count, I have ridden 608 coasters. Um, I mean, obviously, you think, oh my gosh, that's high credit count. I mean, I mean, whatever. I mean, that's my credit count. So It's and a then, blessing and a curse. I, I know, right? But now we're going to favorite park memory. Favorite park memory, for me, is the Hollywood Nights. This past 2021 season of Holiday World, I went to uh, Hollywood Nights. Uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Got to hang out with so many friends. It was it was absolutely insane. So fun. Um, got to hang out with all the friends. It was absolutely like just, I, I love that. It. it was the two days. I think it was June 4th and 5th. Got to meet so many people. It was an absolute blast. But that's it for me, Caleb. Um, I mean, who are you? I mean, what are you? I mean, let's start off. So I'm Backyard Thrills on Instagram. Uh, I only have an Instagram at the current moment. However, uh, I'm starting this podcast now, so there I am on. I mean, yeah, uh, we're starting a podcast. This is so weird. This is weird. Um, so my first ever coaster was Goofy's Barnstormer at Disney World. I have been a Disney World annual pass holder since I was like three years old. Um. So I have had Disney in my veins for a very, very long time. Yeah, um, we both have. <laughs> we, we both have. That's I mean, why we living both... in Florida, it's 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 easy and like you know. It's, That's why we like... say we're pretty spoiled because we are we've very been spoiled. to Disney a lot. Yeah. Um, but um, that what really got me into coasters was actually Rock and Roller Coaster. That was my first roller coaster with inversions. Uh, I knew it had inversions going into it, and if you knew the story about how I got onto it, you would actually think that I didn't like coasters to start out with. Uh, I loved I loved coasters without inversions in it before I rode Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain. Was addicted to those all the time. Every time I visited Magic Kingdom, I had to ride those. However, I had never ridden a coaster that went upside down, and that kind of scared me a bit. I mean, just like anybody who's riding coasters for the first time going upside down. Um, but I feel like that really got me into it because after I got off, I was like, wow, this is the best thing ever. You know, the adrenaline rush I got from it was just insane. And I still get an adrenaline rush to this day on it because that launch is insane and so underrated. Yeah, we love Rock and Roller Coaster. It's, it's such a good ride. I, it's such a good, just such a good coaster. It's really good for Disney. I mean, like, it's, 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 it's like it's, it's like really extreme for a Disney coaster. I mean, like three inversions, that's weird. I mean, I, and like going to Disney for this, like for a long time, it's just weird to think that. But hey, I mean, it's rock and roll coaster, we love it. And my credit count to the current moment is one hundred and twelve. And my favorite coaster is Iron Guazi. Uh, yeah, Iron Guazi. We'll, we'll get, get to that later. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Iron Glossy is so good. So good. But you saw the title. We're foreshadowing it. But you just got to wait just a tiny bit. We'll get there soon. Okay. And my favorite park memory is definitely I took an Ohio trip recently last summer. And my second day at Cedar Point was definitely the best day I had over on that whole trip. Because of the fact that... It was just a regular day in June. It wasn't. It was pretty average crowds. However, I feel like I got so much done during that day that I, because of how efficient I was that day, got to ride like Steel Vengeance three times. Got to do like Maverick five times. I got to do like Dragster three times. I mean, and we, that's yeah. that. Inc- that's incredible as a stat as itself. I mean, if you know anything about Dragster and how much it goes down. Yeah, it's, it's hard to do it even twice in one day. I mean, come on, we love Cedar Point. Cedar Point's great, but um, I mean, yeah, I mean that's I mean that's all we all that. But 
I mean, you I mean, you can see the point, right? So, <laughs> I mean, but, yeah, pretty much, uh, since, I mean, we just got off of Iron Gawazi, still more foreshadowing, but, like, yeah, so, moving on, um, I mean, like, just how do we meet? I mean, like, <laughs> we're, we're still new to this, so just, like, we're working out the kings, you know, I mean, maybe a little dead spots, but we'll see, so, They're, how do we meet? I mean, uh, we actually go... Some of you may not know this, but we actually go to the same school. We go way back. Yeah, like pretty way back. I think it was about the the first time we probably met was about like fourth grade. I think. I mean, Caleb. His, Caleb his was fourth in fourth grade. My fifth yeah. grade. Yeah. So that was the first time we met. But like, we never really got to know each other until like a the, while after that. Yeah, it was until twenty twenty when we finally got to know each other. And that's when I, I was like, wow, like, uh, there's another person at the school that likes roller coasters. And I was like, so pumped because I like I wanted to have some like enthusiast friends. I mean, and I was like, wow, like this person like at my school loves roller coasters. And ever since then, like we just keep we talking been, roller coasters. We have been best friends ever since. Yeah, it's <laughs> since for two years now. It's, it's insane. But like. Yeah, I mean, we go to the same school, like, we get to see each other every day. It's so nice to have an enthusiast friend, just, a be- enthusiast just, best friend, and just to just see that right all the time. in the same school. Yeah, I know, and we've gone to so many parks together, so many memories. It's really funny, because, like, both of our favorite park memories, like, have not been together, which is weird. It's but, weird, but... <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully, I mean, foreshadowing for this year, we may go to some more events this summer, so... Stay tuned for those plans, but... We're still debating on those. Still debating on those, yes. <laughs> De- mainly, like, I'll just spoil some of it right now, but mainly depends on if we can get in Howling... Uh, not Howling Hornets. I love Howling Hornets. Hollywood Nights. Hollywood Nights, yes. I, I mean, I would just love to go to Hollywood Nights again. Uh, Caleb really wants to go. I mean, obviously the Voyage Night rides are unbeatable. I mean, you all, like, if you haven't gone, you just want to go there so bad. If you have gone, you just rave about it. So, that's just, it's it's, it's insane. But, I might as well spoil the whole thing. Another option is Roller Coaster Rodeo. So, if you ever know about that, it's a event taking place in Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, I think it's about three days or maybe two and a half days. Um, but, it is a really cool event. I've seen people... Uh, I think it might have started, no, no, I'm not sure which is the first year. It was um, last year. It was the first last year, year was the it. first year. But this year, they are starting with Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. So, <laughs> which will be pretty interesting. It'll be an interesting dive, for if sure. If Six Flags can get it open on time. I mean, it is Six Flags, so. They might not even have, have might, it open it might, by then. And it might open plans. in 2023, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think they really, like, with the park management, I know they, like, manage that park well now. I feel like they'll try to get it open by Roller Coaster Rodeo. I mean, it's already in the plans I've seen for Roller Coaster Rodeo to have like a main focus on it. So yeah, that's the main event of that's the main thing of Roller Coaster Rodeo is Doctor B- Diabolicals. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Roller Coaster Rodeo would also be really cool. I mean, there's pretty much like just two options for those parks, like for those trips. Sorry, but like. You would have the Roller Coaster Rodeo trip or the Hollywood Nights trip, and Hollywood Nights would include Cedar Point. Ghost of Mania, so I mean that that would be so fun. But I'm really, I'm really excited if both if one of the trips comes to fruition, which we're still debating on which one we rather do, but one of those trips is we're yeah. going on. Yeah, I mean personally, I'm kind of leaning toward Roller Coaster Rodeo. I I mean I know Kelly wants to go to Texas, but. I, I mean, also like, want to go back to Ohio and give Steel Vengeance another shot. Yeah, that, that's worth the trip alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, because it's the best coast in the world. Sorry. So is Top Thrill Dra- <laughs> So is Top Thrill Dragster at night. Yeah, Top Thrill Dragster at night is great. I mean, one time I got ERT on the thing at night. Uh, it was actually like really fun. I mean, I I, I feel like after Top Thrill Dragster, like it doesn't make my top twenty five. Like after you ride it a couple times and keep riding novelty, it over and over the again, it goes away. Yeah, like it, co- it kind of becomes like more like you get used to it and stuff. It's still like absolutely fantastic. I've only ridden it five times, and that's what makes it really good for him. I mean, it, it, it's Top of the Drexler is great. I mean, I, I love Top of the Drexler. Same with King Dakar. But I mean, yeah, I'm personally leaning towards Roller Coaster Rodeo. 
but I know Hollywood Nights will be really good. I, I mean, <laughs> whatever's good. I mean, Gold Coast Rodeo has some really cool stuff. Like I, I'm like that. But also, like in that trip, we would be covering all of Texas, like pretty much all of Texas, Texas, except Wonderland and Amarillo, Texas, and Joyland and Lubbock. Those are very small parks. Most of you probably don't know them, but like. One of them has three credits, the other one has four credits. I, I went there in 2020, so... I mean, I mean, obviously, like, if I have that this many credits, I've gone to, like, a lot of small products, but, like... Who knows, but... Yeah, I mean... That, I mean, those are the only things that excluded is so much out of the way, but, like, all the other parks, we would be able to go to. I mean, Caleb would get so many credits. Yeah, really looking forward to maybe crossing my fingers. Not really... You know, maybe my goal by the end of the year would be 200. Yes, that's a good goal. I'm at 112 right now, so. 112. That's. <laughs> but I yeah. Mean, all of Texas is a lot. Yeah, we already know, like, this summer's gonna be packed. Like, it's gonna be packed. So, um, I mean, we'll have to see, but, like, whatever happens, whatever happens. So, um, I mean, I'm. What else do I want to talk about? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, like, so pretty much. We have been thinking about something. This would be... You know what? I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in the up, upcoming soon. It will be so cool. Just you wait. Just you wait. But I know we may be rushing a little bit through this podcast, but what did you guys come here for? You read the title. Riding Iron Gwazi. For the first time. We just rode Iron Gwazi for the first time yesterday. We were actually, like, That's recording. That's a sentence I thought I would never hear. I know. It's insane. But, like, we just rode. It's like, We're recording this at 12.52 the next day. Like, it's at a.m. Like, we were. it's so late at night. Not even night. It's in the morning. But, like, we rode it yesterday on February 12th. Passport of Thrills. Such a fun. I actually went on both. The 11th and 12th, but Caleb only went on the 12th. So we got so many rides. Caleb got like 31, like today, or yesterday, whatever, in one day. I got 29. Like, it's insane. We got so many rides. I'll get to pretty much, um, we'll get to what we think of Iron Gwazi, but like, we, we have gotten like so many rides. Like, I know Caleb, you know how, you now have 31 rides, and I, since I went like on Friday, I have 57 which i just find that insane like i mean i i know i, I just kept going and going and going it's pretty much what iron guys iron Gwazi, like will do to you it's, it's just you keep wanting more of it you know it's the rmc rush like you know you agree eventually though you find your breaking point and start getting a headache <laughs> yeah like after a while like today like today get... we both felt the rmc airtime yeah <laughs> I mean, <laughs> definitely felt it. You can get a, like an airtime headache, pretty much. But mainly the things that, like, that's just so good about RMC. Like, the airtime is insanely strong. But sometimes that can hurt. My legs kill me. Like, I came prepared today. I brought my own shin guards, a.k.a. clothes I found in my yeah drawers that, was, that, was that i experience. just brought just to wrap around my legs just to protect me from those shin guards so smart thinking on my part because mm, yeah. 31 rides would have not happened if those shin guards had dug into me yeah but like it's insane i mean but pretty much like the airtime on how strong like rmc airtime is combined with if you get so much room if you get like thrown up into the restraint from how strong the airtime is it'll hurt your thighs and then you just slam back down that's how strong rmc airtime is yeah. and iron Gwasi has some of the strongest airtime you will ever get to experience it is absolutely insane but and let's get and it's non-stop from start to finish of airtime 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 yes. airtime yes but let's get to our main thoughts on this masterpiece that is known as Iron Gwazi. Caleb, what is your thoughts on Iron Gwazi? Oh, it's my new number one by far. As soon as I wrote it after the first ride, I was speechless. I knew immediately it was my number one, and no doubt about it, because this ride felt just insane. I mean, I thought Velocicoaster was insane, and Top Throw Dragster was insane. However, this blew me 
away. I had high, very high expectations for this ride, and it met those expectations by 110% times <laughs> whatever <laughs> three to the square root of five. Oh, I mean, it's it. That's a good way to put it. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's unlike speakable. Like. It's it's you can be so speechless when you get off. It's insane. Like you cannot describe on how good Iron Guazi is. I mean, RMC just comes back at it again. It is so good. It is just absolutely insane. And the thing is, like when Caleb said, like he knew it was number one from the first ride, just speaks to how good it is. Like, because it was running slow compared to, to what it was later that night. Yes, about it was about like five hours when we rode it at night. And bro, like night rides on Iron Gwazi are absolutely lethal. Like front row, back row doesn't matter what row you're in; it still is. And plus, like the coaster looks so good at night. Like it has such good lighting package. Really, the only night rides that could possibly like that really beat Iron Gwazi's night rides is number one Voyage. I think anybody would assume that uh, Voyage night rides are top notch. And for me, at least. Steel Vengeance's night rides are a little better than Iron Gwazi's. That's because I think I like it better, but but Iron Gwazi's night rides are top notch. It they are so good. I mean, you get views of everywhere. For some reason, like it feels like Iron Gwazi is just so much taller, you know? It does feel like it's like than maybe Steel Vengeance. Like, it feels like it's about fifty feet taller than Steel Vengeance when it's only one foot taller. Yeah, um, r- really <laughs> It feels so different, but like really, like obviously the main thing like contributing to that is that Two Vengeance is surrounded by top low dragster. It's surrounded by Millennium Force. Iron Gwazi is not. It's only surrounded by a coaster that's as tall as it, which is Shikra, which definitely plays a big part into that. Only I'm, thing that dwarfs it is Falcon's Fury. Yeah, but that's just like so, since it's like so thin. That's just a drop tower. You know? It doesn't look as like menacing and is massive you know so i mean it's i mean it's absolutely insane uh i mean it has like one thing just to say about it it has so many parts of the ride that you will just like you won't see it coming but it will be some of the best it's like some of the best elements of the ride like some of those like that come to mind that cutback it has a you when you go into it crazy intensity and the like transition out of it that is insane like it is so whippy the wave turn it's absolutely insane death roll is insane i mean those last airtime hills towards the end like those are those so strong definitely are the surprising moments of the ride is definitely those final airtime hills are definitely the surprising moments of the ride i mean yeah you just get thrown out of your seat. It is absolutely insane. Everybody before seeing the POV and before riding it was like, oh, it looks like it's just meandering around, you know. They just needed to fill up some track and, you know, extend the ride time a little bit. No, those airtime hills deliver and are probably the strongest moments of ejector on an RMC. For me, at least. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's so good. I mean, I mean, honestly... Those airtime, like, Iron Gwazi really has the full package. It has such good RMC airtime. It has some great intensity. Like, once you, like, you will not know how, like, intense it is until you actually ride it. It has so many good, intense moments. It has some absolutely fantastic inversions. The Death Roll being the main part of that inversion. It definitely is the highlight of the ride that everybody looks forward to. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely insane. It's, it's definitely my favorite version I've ever done. I mean, the Mosasaurus yeah. roll, I think it comes like, close is, to it. Mosasaurus roll is great. However, it, it the death roll on Iron Gwazi feels like it's half, or not half, but times two of the Mosasaurus roll. Yeah, I mean, it's just obviously because it's so much bigger, it's insane, but like, you just get whipped through it. It is like, it, it, it's hard to believe just believe how good it is like i don't see hair out of the park of this thing i mean i mean it's it's my number two for a reason it's, it's caleb's number one for a reason it's it is so good i mean There's so many people's number one who's already ridden it yeah i mean just the one thing i just hope that does not happen i hope that it does not become the new steel vengeance 
like it doesn't get overhyped like even though from my first ride to my 31st ride every time it was consistent it delivered every time it was as forceful as the last it delivered every airtime moment as the last it i feel like it's maybe going to get overhyped and i mean like even now like i'm noticing some enthusiasts are like oh it's gonna be like bad like i <laughs> i know some people who definitely have that mindset but like I, I just don't get it. I mean, I, I mean, RMC to me is just world class. I, I know some people may not be your type of ride, but I, for me, RMC is just my type of manufacturer. It's, they I, produce like my type of rides. And I can agree with that because I think the same thing. Yeah, I mean, like there is like out of my top 10, six of the coasters in my top 10 are RMCs. That tells you how much I love RMC. They are my favorite manufacturer, no doubt. All four of the RMCs I've ridden all make my top ten. Yes, I, I, we'll, we'll get to that later on our top RMCs, but RMC just to me is great. I know, I know. There's um, some people might get annoyed because RMC, but like, I know. I mean, I, I still love other manufacturers like Intamin is so good, GCI, all of those other ones. But RMC just tops it, like tops every other manufacturer for me. And Iron Gwazi is a prime example. I mean, at Bush Gardens, like, with the help of RMC, it really just hit the thing out of the park. I mean, the whole experience walking up to it is great, even for, like, Bush Gardens, which I know is odd, but I mean, like, the employees are very nice. They're very understanding. They're very friendly. And, like, everything about it is just, it's, like, the whole experience is great. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, all the employees are friendly. Like at the, I don't know if this will just be for Passport of Thrills, but they don't really staple you. A lot of the uh, ride ups are enthusiasts, so that does help a little bit. But it's hard for them to staple you. So like, and definitely the, like one thing with the RMC restraints, the shin guards, they help a lot when you're trying not to get stapled. Because you can use your shins to an advantage. That's why my shins are so sore. Like, you can use your shins to your advantage when you're trying to get room. And just like it's a great any, way to get room. Just like on any RMC, like Lightning Rod especially is one of those ones as well that you can use those shin guards to your advantage. I 100% agree. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and that's how you can get great airtime. I mean, honestly, I mean, Iron Gwazi is world class. I think everybody expected that going to it. It's been a, such a long wait. What is it, like three years? Uh, technically, since Gwazi closed, I think it was seven years. Seven years, yeah, since it closed. But like, like that's when people, ex- that's how long people have been waiting to get back on Gwazi. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember writing the original Gwazi. Um, I thought it was, I mean, I was very little, so I didn't have that much of a judgment mindset, but... I, I liked it. It was rough, obviously. The old Gwazi was definitely rough, but I just thought it was really fun. I, I liked that coaster. It was really fun. Um, I mean, I'm obviously, I'm like super glad they removed it because we got one of the best coasters in the world. But, I mean, it's, it's just great. I mean, Iron Gwazi, I mean, come on. I never had the privilege of riding the original Gwazi like Andrew has. However, just from his description of it, I mean... Arnguazi is definitely the more preferred coaster, unless you really love wooden coasters and don't like RMC. But even if you really love like wooden coasters and don't like RMC, I bet there's still somehow that you will like Arnguazi better than the original Guazi. I think there's no chance you can like the regular Guazi better than Arnguazi. Um, I mean, I, I mean, maybe there's those select minority that do. What, yeah, I mean, maybe, but like, those there's are, always those some people. I mean, there's always there, those are probably those Karens that really just don't want to do it. Yeah, um, <laughs> that want to go against the crowd. <laughs> that that want to do stuff. <laughs> uh, we're getting off track, but they want unpopular opinions to be their no their their thing. Yeah, I know, but. Speaking of unpopular opinions, let's go to our unpopular opinions. 
Caleb, what's your first unpopular opinion? My first unpopular <clears throat> opinion is Kings Island is better than Cedar Point. That is questionable. I mean, you like Kings Island better than Cedar Point? I mean, I, I can understand. I mean, Kings Island is a great park. Like, seriously, Kings Island is great. I just don't, I mean, obviously you have a different mindset, but like, if we go back to Cedar Point, that would be great. I mean, uh, Cedar Point is actually my favorite park, so. The reason, see. my justification as to why Cedar Point is better, no, Kings Island is better than Cedar Point. <laughs> oh, Cedar Point's better? No. <laughs> is because the overall experience at Kings Island, I felt like was really a lot better than the overall experience at Cedar Point. At Cedar Point, you know, the people, the employees there were okay. At Kings Island, everybody was really friendly. The people that I ran into were super nice. The employees, uh, the Orion crew was definitely one of the highlights. They were just amazing. I mean, that crew can get out a train. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, all the crew, it's like Cedar Fair. I hope they do not get bought out by like Six sea Flags World. or Sea World, like because Cedar Fair, I feel like it's just is such a goodly like such a good run company. They have so many good things that they do. All their additions are just absolutely fantastic. Cedar Fair is definitely my favorite like chain of parks. If you I, you could say, I mean, Disney. I mean, there's Disney and Universal, but I, I, I kind of like put them in a different category now. It's like, but for amusement parks, Cedar Fair is on top. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just produce, like, so many good, like, quality parks. Like, Cedar Point, Kings Island, like, the list goes on and on. It's insane. Like Carowinds. Yeah, Carowinds. Like, even their lower-tier parks. Like, one of my favorite lower-tier parks from Cedar Fair is Valley Fair. Like, that place is, in my opinion, that place is so fun. It's so fun. Like, partly because, like, when you go there, it's from a vacation, like, in the summer. But, like, still. I've never so been. Fun. Yeah. Like, just, I mean... Still got me. Carowinds. Kill have been to Carowinds. Twice. Twice, yeah. Carowinds is absolutely fantastic. I mean, we'll see what happens with the like the buying from Six Flags. Not Six Flags. I mean, SeaWorld. SeaWorld mainly, but I think Six Flags put in a bid, didn't they? No, that was in, or, that was a while ago that they did. Yeah, but I thought I heard something. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't have that, that big knowledge, but... I don't think it's going to go through. I hope not. Well, something that I think probably would be beneficial to Cedar Fair is maybe selling s- off their non-important parks. Yeah, I, I think Cedar so Fair that way like they can focus more money and more of their resources into their higher up parks. Yeah, I feel like if Cedar Fair, let's say, sold Valley, not Valley Fair, but Michigan's let's say, Adventure, Michigan's Adventure, yes, but let's say they sold Worlds of Fun, Gilroy Gardens, but they like, they don't like probably on that bike. But let's say they sold Worlds of Fun. That would be a great Bush Gardens park. They they could sell it to obviously SeaWorld Entertainment. That could become a great Bush Gardens park. There's lands of the world. There's so many things that like SeaWorld Entertainment could do with that park. And there's so much room to expand. Yeah, so I much mean, room. I mean, they, they could, could do whatever they want with that park, to be honest. It's, it's just crazy how much amount of space that park has. Yeah, they could do absolute wonders. Um, Worlds of Fun, I still think is pretty well run. They, just, they haven't gotten that many additions, but hey, we'll have to see. But like, for my unpopular opinion, let's go to my unpopular opinion. Guess what? El Toro does not make my top 25. Caleb, you haven't written it, but what are your th- opinions? Um, it depends on how good the coasters in your top 25 are, uh, because I mean, I know a lot of people say El Toro is pretty elite. Sarah. Uh, Sarah does, and, uh, El Toro Ryan does too. Obviously. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's in his name, so. I mean, yeah. I feel like, I mean, I'm like, if a random person looked at my list, and saw the coasters that were above El Toro, they would just be mad. Like, simply just be mad. But El Toro just doesn't do it for me. Like, I feel like the experience every time I go up is just... I don't know, something's just a little off. It's For me, it's always been rough. Maybe this retracking might help. Hopefully. But for me, it's always been rough. The airtime is definitely good. It's the only good thing about it. 
that I drop the two Camelbacks, the Rolling Thunder. In my opinion, the Rolling Thunder isn't even that good. It has good airtime, but it just doesn't do it for me. I mean, El Toro, I've ridden since 2016. I've gone so many times. It used to be my number four. But since 2020, when I rode again that summer, it hasn't made my top 25 since. Oh, actually, I think I might have made 24, but like, it's it's just, I don't know. I mean, even like some like other weird ghosters, I'll like rank better, which like, I'll rank Copperhead Strike above it. Which I know you may think like Copperhead Strike is so underrated. I, I know mean, the ejector on Copperhead Strike is yeah, I mean, not like, expected. I'll I, say that. Like Caleb and I like only rode it like in May. We like, love tw- Copperhead Strike. Like in past May twenty twenty one, um, there's that last hill. On if you search it up, the last hill on Copperhead Strike, we called it the Death Hill. Literally, it is the Death Hill. Like, the, you know, there's the Death Roll in Iron Gwazi, but this is the Death Hill. There's the Death Ejector Hill on Zip and Pippin. Yes. The, or the Ejector Death Hill. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. This I, thing, I don't know about that thing. This uh, thing, the rest of the ride compared to this hill, just... we. This I'm, thing yeets. It yeets. I feel like, speaking of Zip and Pippin, I, I feel like that airtime, like, is... I mean, there's the Ejector Death Hill. I'm not sure if it's that good, though. Like, I did it... I did it in all the roads I was like good. It wasn't that good. But we are somewhat getting off track. But let's move on to our next subject. Caleb, what's our next subject? Let's, let's do it. Our rarest credit. Yeah, so. Oh. <laughs> we're going. We're, we're going, we're going we're, through this. Guess what we're doing? We are going unscripted. Please stand by. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but yo, we are Dude. going unscripted. Um, but let's get back to our Iron Gwazi. Uh, where does Iron Gwazi rank in our rankings? I think we already went through this. Um, for me, uh, it ranks in my number two. The one coaster that is above it is obviously Steel Vengeance. I honestly, I think they're tied. I never thought I would do this, but I think they're tied. I think just for me, it's hard to put like Iron Gwazi. Over Steel Vengeance because I feel like Iron like Steel Vengeance just packs something that no other coaster does. Yeah, repetitive airtime. Uh, whatever, <laughs> that is makes it so good, you but, know. But it's repetitive. I mean, it and has, you're stapled most of the ride, even but, if you get room bumped. But I, I, th- I think that brings perspective into my part of the view. I mean, it's just for me, like when I ride Steel Vengeance. I I always get I always get a lot of room. I never got any room on Steel Vengeance. The ride ops when I went were very staple happy. Like uh, if like, you even got the slightest bit of room on Steel Vengeance or any coaster that at Cedar Point that day, they would staple you on it. But I feel like if you know how to avoid being stapled, it's pretty it's easier to not get stapled you know i think you can get like so much room uh like the shin guards as i said with iron Gwazi, they definitely help but back to iron Gwazi, iron Gwazi is my number two so obviously Steel what Vengeance, ranks below it what ranks after iron Gwazi? Mm-hmm. um at number three we have voyage which voyage the main thing for me that did it was <laughs> the hollywood nights night rides Voyage at Night is an experience to behold. It is world class. You are flying, and when you when you are with friends, it is an experience that you will never forget. It is so good. Where's Velocicoaster? Number four. But we'll get to that later we'll in the through, rankings. We'll get through this. <laughs> we'll get through this. But Caleb, what does it rank for you? I think we all know where it is. Obviously, I said it already. Number one. Number. I mean. Yes, I did have top Dill dragster as my number one for a very long time i liked it even more than steel vengeance i liked it even more than velocicoaster which that's an unpopular opinion too however um i i liked iron Gwazi so much and just the i like when coasters have power like iron Gwazi has a ton of power so does top Dill dragster and so does velocicoaster and so does Fury three two five. So to say, 
Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you say so. Uh, but, and yes, yeah, so does Steel Vengeance. But what manufacturer made Steel Vengeance? RMC. And guess what we're doing in the next subject? We're doing our RMC rankings. Caleb, let's start out with Caleb. Caleb, you have written four RMCs. Here we have our rankings. Technically, in my rankings, I've written five, but yes, one of them was a retrack, and I'm pretty sure you know what that was. Number one is Lightning, is, uh, I'm sorry, Iron Gwazi is my number one. Number two for me is Steel Vengeance, even though, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we kind of have, we kind of debated about that all I, the time. I think it was overhyped for me. I had my expectations too high. As he said, when he needs to go get Steel Vengeance, uh, another, re- shot. another shot. Yes, I feel like if he's with me, like it'd be a better experience for him because he knows how to not get stapled. Yeah. If if that will work, <laughs> but what's your number three? My number three is Lightning Rod. I mean, I, you've, you've you have like the four arms you've written are like top notch, other than your fourth, which yeah, my. Well, technically, my third and fourth are lightning rod. In my ranking, is I had put them as two separate credits because yeah. more than more than fifty percent of the track was redone. So that is makes sense. Yeah, it makes that, sense. That that, to my opinion, is a new credit. If more than fifty percent of the track is redone at once, it is a new credit. Yeah, and yeah then, I, I count it as a new credit myself. I mean, I normally don't do that type of stuff, but hey. I might as well do it. <laughs> Who cares? But what's your number four? My number four slash five is Twisted Cyclone. Yeah, Twisted Cyclone packs a punch. It's so nice. It's a short. It's the definition of short but sweet. Okay, so let's go to my RMC rankings, which is a lot more than mine. Yeah, I I'm gonna go quickly through this. I've done 15 RMCs. So I think that just gives you a reason for me to go through this. As you can see, he travels a lot more than I do. I mean, well, I, guess, I guess so. But number 15, we have the first RMC I've ever written, New Texas Giant. So many memories of that. It is it is so fun. Um, though it was the first RMC, it still is a great ride. has so much great airtime, and I really love it. Number 14 is Joker, located at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Uh, Joker, I love. Um, I really don't get it. Like, if people don't like it, I don't get it. Uh, it's still an absolutely fantastic ride. Obviously, every single coaster RMC makes is so good. Like, New Texas Giant, best coaster in the park. I mean, come on. And Six Flags Over Texas is a pretty big park. So, moving on to the number 13 spot, we have Jersey Devil, which is my least favorite Raptor, which I still love Jersey Devil. Not I mean, surprising. Yeah, I mean, hey, everybody seems to hate on Jersey Devil. I like it. Uh, it looks great. That's probably my favorite part about it. It looks great. Same with Wonder Woman. Yeah, probably. Was, and Railblazer. Railblazer looks better than Wonder Woman, in my opinion. Oh, okay. I, I, Wonder Woman looks good, though. I do like it. But guess what also looks good? Goliath. Goliath has taken my number 12 spot, and Goliath is such a good ride. I mean, I it pretty much redeemed itself for me. In 2021, it was my least favorite RMC, but man, the rides I got on it were great. I got some night rides, and it really is just so fun. It's so fast. It is such such a great experience. As an 11, we have Outlaw Run. Um, I feel like some people definitely do overhype this coaster. Taylor. Yeah, that was about <laughs> Taylor about definitely to say. overhypes Outlaw Run. But hey, it's still a fantastic coaster. I mean. It has some great, it's just some great moments to it. It's just a little rough, in my opinion. I mean, I think it needs some retrack. Then it'll be good. It was, a, like, one of the first wooden coasters to go upside down. Was it the first? It was the first. Yeah, it was the first. It has, th- like, three inversions. Technically, if you don't, ex- if you if you can include Son of Beast in that category, then it would well, be the true. second. However, it is the first still wooden successfully wooden. successfully yes but moving on to number 10 we have a hybrid we have twisted cyclone uh located six flags over georgia as i said caleb's are in this short but, but sweet yeah it packs a punch like it packs a serious punch some of the airtime moments are absolutely insane that drop fantastic back seat is the way to go i mean 
They have some great inversions. That first inversion is great. The wave turn is great. Everything about this coaster and that short layout is great. It's Same. just too short. Yeah, well, that was one of my main complaints. Was like when it opened or like when they released the animation, I was like, wait, what? Like the original Cyclone, uh, Georgia Cyclone went around three times. I was so confused why I only went around twice. But I feel like that really benefited the ride because I feel like, I, like with with the speed that I had, it would have died out. Yeah, it would have definitely like some people think Wicked Cyclone definitely has that third lap that is kind of slow. I feel like Twisted Cyclone definitely would have been even slower than that if it had a third lap. Agreed. But speaking of Wicked Cyclone, coming at the number nine spot is that coaster. Located at Six Flags New England in the New England region of America. This thing is fantastic. I keep I feel like I keep saying this every RMC single RMC. is just fantastic in general. Yes, I know. Wicked Cyclone, great. I mean, some of the versions are great. It has some great, just some underrated outer bank airtime hills. Like, those are great. Um, some are just normal just normal airtime hills that will really throw you out of your seat. It's great. So at number eight, we have three coasters, which I know it's three coasters, but I'm putting them all it's one. It's pretty much the same. I know. I know exactly what you're thinking. Red Blazer, Wonder Woman, and Stunt Pilot. However, in all three, um, they're both really good. Stunt Pilot, definitely the weaker link, but Red Blazer and Wonder Woman, both absolutely insane. They whip you around like heck. It is insane. Uh, Red Blazer is probably my favorite out of all of them, and though the shoulder straps are a complaint to some people, to me they're not. Probably because I'm short, but <laughs> definitely. But number seven, we have one of the most aggressive coasters you will ever ride. Storm Chaser, located in Kentucky Kingdom. Absolutely lethal. It is ab- well, That's one word to describe it. It is lethal and aggressive. Crazy aggressive. It is Kentucky Kingdom rides. This past year, they greased their wheels. They did everything they could to make it run like a dream. And boy, did it run like a dream. It was absolutely fantastic. And coming in at the number six, we have Iron Rattler. Six Flags Fiesta Texas. So good. It's absolutely so good. Dive off the quarry wall. Fantastic. That drop is probably the best RMC drop I've ever experienced. If you sit in the back row while it's going over that lift hill fast, you will get yeeted. It is so Flipping fantastic. I feel didn't like a you, lot of people... Didn't like, you have that higher? I used to, actually. But a coaster that is better than it and it has just moved above it is Twisted Colossus. Which, Twisted Colossus is fantastic. Simple way to say it. Fantastic. Both dueling sides are great. Um, it really is RMC in one ride. Great airtime. Has some great inversions. That stall is fantastic. Has some great intensity. Uh, and it's really just so good. I mean, I feel like there's a really big jump from number five to four. At number four, we have Lightning Rod, which, you know, Lightning Rod, I adore this coaster. It's probably one of the coasters I've ridden the most out of all time. I remember just going here every Christmas, riding it probably like 50 times every visit, every Christmas since like. 2016 was the first time I went. It is, RMC is a fan, uh, not RMC, but twi- uh, Lightning Rod is a fan favorite of mine. If it's not down. If it's not down. But that's the thing. It has never been down for me. I have gone in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Not a single time I went was it down. Which is s- insane. Especially since I watched Coaster Studios back then, seeing all of the times you couldn't ride it, I was like, what the heck? And it was insane. But taking the number three is one of the most underrated coasters out there. I don't get how this thing is overlooked. I don't get how it's just so underrated. Yeah, it is Twisted Timbers. A King's Dominion. This to me is a mini Steel Vengeance. It is absolutely insane. It's, once again, it's my type of ride. Some people may, if you don't like Steel Vengeance, you won't like this. This is just a mini Steel Vengeance. It or is, mini Iron Gwazi now. But it has, it's, I just feel like it's more similar to Steel Vengeance. But because of the consecutive airtime, it is just absolutely lethal. Number two, I think you guessed it by now, Iron Gwazi. Uh, obviously with our top two, Iron Gwazi, Steel Vengeance. 
one or two. We already went through those. What haven't we said about those two that can't be said? Yeah, I know. Uh, this is pretty much like the most basic coaster enthusiast talking. <laughs> like, the uh, most this is the basic and coaster enthusiast top two. Yeah, like what a way to start a podcast. I remember, right? It's so original. <laughs> Let's just say that. But we are original coaster enthusiasts. I mean, that is the that is the podcast. I mean, like. We don't know what to do with the first episode. We're just rambling around. It's coach is unscripted for a reason, guys. The fact that we've been rambling for almost an hour at this point is crazy. I mean, I'm not sure if we'll get to an hour, but it is our first podcast, so we we're still like working it out, you know. So I think I think we should probably end it soon, you know. Um, it's about we're about 50 minutes in. If you can see that on the time, you're probably watching. So we're gonna end it soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was the first episode of the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. Caleb, do you have any last words to say to the viewers? Thank you guys for making it through all 50 minutes of this podcast. Um, I know we enjoyed making it. For Uh, sure. We have been working on trying to get this done for maybe a year? About a year, year, yeah. Yeah, it's I would been say insane. I would say about a year or so, and we are still working out the kinks. And you know, this is a trial and error type thing. Uh, we would re- we would really enjoy if you guys would stay tuned for the next episode. Yeah, we have so much. We coming. have so many ideas, so many things you to do. talk about. Uh, you know, other things could pop up between now and then that still could be added to this list. You know, this could really go like this could be a major podcast uh we hope we We hope hope. hope. or it could just be a dumpster fire of only one episode (laughs) but we know we hope it's not that it's not gonna be that we have so much coming definitely stay tuned for everything coming and see ya